I'm Robert Scoble, and we're here at TechCrunch Disrupt. I'm uh, the startup liaison officer for uh, Rackspace, and we are uh, doing little interviews with cool entrepreneurs all day long. Infrequently, we're playing around, we're learning our new TriCaster. Uh, we got a new $22,000 switcher to do all sorts of fun stuff. And we have a little studio here at the front of uh, TechCrunch Disrupt, and so you'll see all the people coming in uh, live. But today uh, we have uh, breaking news, sort of, you know? Yeah. So yeah. who are you? My name is Gary Flake. I'm the CEO and founder of, of Clipboard. Yeah, and you just announced a new iPhone app yeah. and, a, yeah. and a new design and all yeah, sorts yeah. of new so, features. So, so we, we, have a, we publicly released in, in the end of May and this is a, a, a major update to the service. So we, we have a whole new design. Uh, we think it's going to resonate with a lot more people. Um, Before we get into that, sure. some, most people probably don't know what Clipboard is. So. Yeah, so Clipboard is a very simple and powerful way of saving bits and parts of web pages and being able to organize them and share them and collaborate with others. The big key differentiator between what we do and what others do is that the parts of web pages that you save look like what you remember, retain pretty much all the functionality, uh, have all the sort of context preserved. So videos will play, flash embeds will play, slideshows will play, uh, a Facebook post will look like a Facebook post. So it's really it's really the best way of saving anything online and then being able to act on it later. Yeah, it's really cool. You just go to a web page or a piece of a web page, yep. highlight it, copy it, yep. and then paste it in. And it does uh, sort of something that looks like Pinterest. It, lays well, out a grid of, of all your clips. Yeah, our, our layout is a little bit more complicated than Pinterest because um, you know, when you're dealing only with photos, uh, you, you can actually kind of constrain to width and it, and it looks well. And also yeah. you're always dealing just with the visual media. However, people are, are clipping Google search results, which happens to be very wide and skinny. And so trying to fit that to width would completely break the usability of that. So we actually have a tiling algorithm that's fairly sophisticated on how the, how the layout works. Yeah. And um, um, just because we have a lot more heterogeneous content. And you can set up boards. Like my wife and I are going to Rome in December, yep. so we have a clipboard of uh, our, our things that we want to do in Rome, the mm -hmm. hotels we're looking at, and the, yeah, the yeah. tourist spots we want to go and visit, and the, and the restaurants friends tell us about, stuff like that. That can be a, that's a private board, so it's just between me and my wife. Exactly, exactly. And one of the new features that we released today is something that we call shared board. So basically, a board is merely a collection of clips that all have the same tag. So if you, if you have a vacation, if you've been tagging things vacation, you'll have a vacation board. But what's new and different today is that now on one of your boards that's private, you can add members to it. And they could be administrators, they could be writers, they could be readers. And so you can, you can make it so that it's an, an, a collaboration tool for a company yeah. or something that you want to be publicly facing. So if you want to publicly co-curate. And so the way it works is that if, you're, if you and I have a shared board and it's my board, you can actually write clips to it so that people who view the board will see the aggregate. Yeah, and that, and that shows that these boards now are more flexible. Like TechCrunch could have a TechCrunch Disrupt board That's right. where their entire staff is pasting in articles and yeah. tweets and, and photos. And that's exactly right, that's exactly right. And, and that's a really good point and a good segue to, to call out that we're having a contest today. So just like the official tag on Twitter uh, is, I think, TC Disrupt. Um, if you clip something with Clipboard today and tag it TC Disrupt, and hopefully that's for relevant information, relevant use of the tag, we're gonna be giving away an iPad uh, later, later on at the end of the day uh, from whoever you know sampled from one of the clips that have been tagged in this way. Very cool. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, the design is really nice now. It, Thank you. You simplified it, right? It's a, yeah. it's a cleaner and more uh, yeah. modern looking design, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, one of the things that we worked really hard is we've been analyzing a lot of metrics, looking at what features were used, what weren't used, uh, getting a lot of uh, just you know, uh, feedback from, from users and also, you know, rank ordering uh, the most frequently requested features. And so what's really interesting is that we, we used to organize the universe of clips in terms of your stuff, uh, shared stuff, and public stuff. And we found that the shared tab, as it was, was kind of confusing for people because it overlapped. It overlapped with both public and private things. So we've redesigned it so that the main information architecture is your stuff versus public stuff. Shared boards is now the preferred mechanism for kind of having that collaboration. And we've gotten rid of like the geeky filters that were on the left and replaced it with a more powerful search box. Yeah. Well, it's crazy. We're here at day two, so people. Yeah, are, yeah, yeah. The show's about to start. At, yeah. I guess Mark Zuckerberg's here and yeah, yeah, be talking yeah. with Mike Arrington. Um, 
iPhone. You, yeah. you have a new iPhone app that that's just right. hit this morning. That's right. It just, it just hit the stores uh, uh, this late last night. This makes it useful for me because yeah. most of my collection is, you know, I'm yeah. standing in line somewhere, I'm walking around, I'm yeah. reading Facebook or Twitter, and it's, oh, I want to save yeah. that. Yeah. Now, now I can just highlight that, copy it, and then paste it right yeah. into the clipboard yeah. app. And, and this, is, this is actually a really good point. So the iPhone app allows you to not only view your own clips or other people's clips, yeah. um, it's also a clipping tool within the iOS itself. So, so what's really kind of novel about this is that you could be surfing in Safari, yeah. and uh, it takes a while for the thumbnails to load up. And, yep. yeah. Um, you could be surfing in Safari, you highlight uh, a part, part of a Safari web page, uh, and using the native copying, you know, highlight and copy mechanism, and then switch over to the clipboard app and you can, you can save that as a, a rich clip that looks like HTML, or just the text, or you could get a server-side uh, uh, screen grab generated yeah. for you. And so, as soon as you paste yeah. it in, it pastes in, like yep. if, if my wife is watching her board, That's exactly it shows right. up immediately. That's exactly right. Awesome. Yeah. Can I can I copy native elements like uh, photos or yes, videos? Yes, yes, you can. So if you go to your photo library and you just do that long pause on a photo to bring up the copy thing, then go switch back into clipboard. You can just paste it into clipboard. Oh, that's so, really nice. Yeah, and you can also you can also copy things from notebook or mail or any any iOS app that supports the native copying selection because clipboard works with that internal copy buffer on iOS. Yeah, we both have iPads. Yeah. The app works on iPad, but it's still the small size. Yeah, right? we haven't we haven't had a chance to optimize it for the iPad yet. That that will come out next, and it won't be too long. We're experimenting with different visual layouts that would work on that better on that form factor. We thought it was better just to come out with the iOS app first, and then get a reaction and help you know let that shape our. our Every time an I, I, uh, somebody brings out a cool app on iOS, all the Android people freak out and go, "Well, what about us?" Yeah, yeah no, no, so we're, we are focused on that as well, and and. We thought, you know, there were a lot of hard problems to figure out. In particular, you know, I, I don't know of any other app that allows content from a, a multitude of apps to come together in one place. Because if you yeah. think about it, almost we almost live in a world in which each app is its own data silo, and we're trying to kind of connect the dots between all these different things in a way that's better for the user. And so there were some hard problems to figure out. We wanted to tackle iOS first because, uh, for obvious reasons, but Android is definitely on our radar. Yeah. What. Is you know, um, why do we need this? So, uh, you know, why do we need yet another collection tool? Because there's been so many collection tools. Yeah, yeah. Over you know, it's it's really interesting if you just think about you know the evolution of the web. All right, we we've we've gone through the sort of the browsing metaphor dominating, then search, and then now social. Um, what's really fascinating is that saving is kind of oddly late to the game, and it's and I think it's a sort of a historical accident because uh, of the security model of the web preventing websites from interfering with each other and the browser, and also preventing websites from interfering with what's going on on, on your device. And so what, what's happened is is that having that strong security model effectively broke saving for decades, and this is why the the methods for saving have been wholly deficient. So what were your options? You could bookmark, you could paste into a Word document, you can email something to yourself, you could take a screen grab, you could do a save as on the web page. And every method that you would use for saving part of a web page, there was something wrong with it. The, the screen grab doesn't have the links preserved, pasting it into a document or email doesn't look right, the functionality is lost and everything else, or it's like a big cumbersome object that's hard to kind of you know, clip on the go. With Clipboard, we've actually, we, we've, for the first time, we have a mechanism that actually, you can check off all the desirable attributes. It looks like what you remember, it has the functionality, you can do it on the go, you can hold it all in one place, you can aggregate the sort of social collective wisdom if people are publishing their clips. So it really has all of those benefits. And I think that, while this may seem like a small thing, like better bookmarking, if you think about it, over the course of your lifetime, you're, you really are going to visit perhaps 100,000 or more websites. Maybe even for some people, maybe it's going to be millions. I don't yeah. know. And um, Well, it depends what you think of as a website. Because I, yeah. I don't think about the web anymore. I think about streams. Yeah, like, yeah. On Twitter, I get a new tweet every half of a yeah, second. So every, you, every, you were getting, that's right, you're getting thousands of these things a day. Yeah. And, and so your online existence, in some sense, is almost like the dark matter of the universe. It's, it's the, the, the things that are recorded and saved and preserved is actually just the tip of the iceberg and that might not be the stuff that's most important to you. Yeah. So what we're really doing is we're really trying to create an infrastructure that will help people to shape their digital identities for a lifetime. Yeah. And that's what Clipboard is all about.
I, I noticed that there's a, a, I think your company is starting to move more towards search. Because, a little uh, bit. you know, after you get a, a couple thousand of these clips and yeah, board yeah, and separate yeah. boards, you or need to be able to search them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So we actually. It's not going to be very long then before I have a couple thousand in here because yeah. it, it's just so easy to copy, paste, copy, yeah. paste. We, we, have, we have users with, with north of 10,000 clips, and we actually prioritize uh, the search back in on day one. Uh, we're big fans and proponents of React as a NoSQL solution. And what we did was over a year ago, we made some custom modifications to the search core of React and yeah. gave it back to the community, gave it back to Basho. It actually shipped with, with React version 1.0 over a year ago. And so that's something where we, we feel like we have a really good understanding about how to make React scale for search. In fact, I'm, I'm giving a keynote on that in, in October on, uh, at, at React's conference. So we've worked really hard to make that, make that work well. And so yes, you can search over all your clips. You can, you can search over all of the world's clips. And, uh, and it should be pretty, pretty snappy. All the public clips. All the public clips, that's yeah. right. If, you, if the default is to leave a clip private, you have to choose to publish it. And when you do that, that means it's going to be part of the global search results when people are searching or when someone visits your clipboard profile page. But if you leave it private, it'll yeah. be invisible. Most people don't know that you, you worked at Microsoft and were one of the guys, the guys behind Bing there. So you, you bring bit, some yeah. of that uh, engineering uh, yeah, this. yeah. So I, I, uh, I, I had a couple different roles and, and wore a lot of different hats at Microsoft and and, and you were at Yahoo before that. Yeah, so I, you I around. Yeah, <laughs> and I was a, I was a chief science officer of Overture as well. So I worked in paid search, then I worked in broader web things. I founded and ran Yahoo Research Lab and and then also Microsoft Live Lab where we did things like like uh, Sea Dragon and Pivot and and Photosynth and so. All that time, I had been struggling with what was the future of, of user-created content and where was the sweet spot on kind of bringing together all the different tensions behind th th those things and doing what was right for the user, really kind of making a, a, a product that would resonate with normal people. Yeah, and you can see the search background that you have, yeah, you know, the yeah. ability to find things. And, and, yeah, and well if anything, if anything, our previous interface was overly geeky and reflective of that background. Yeah. So for example, we used to have a filter pane on the left hand side of the UI that had tags and sites and people. And what we've done is we've taken that away, we've left more real estate for content, but we have a really smart search box now. So for example, if you're looking at your stuff, and you just hover over the search box, you're going to see suggestions of your most frequently referenced tags, people, and sites for your stuff. Yeah. And that will be based on both your public and private content because you're the one who's looking at it. But if I go to your profile page, I will see suggestions that are only related to you and your public uh, contributions. But if I go to something that's more of a global view of clips, like if I went to all everything tagged recipes, or if I went to the gaming category or something like that, the suggestions that I'll see will be more category based and more a function of the global statistics. Yeah. So it's it's smart, it's contextual, and you can you can you know you can it, it actually is better in every way than the filter pane that we used to have. I usually don't ask entrepreneurs to dig in underneath the covers, and, yeah. but since you mentioned React, tell me. Uh, uh, what React is and, and what other yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. systems you use underneath the service. To yeah, yeah, so, so I, I love geeking out on this stuff. Uh, we've had such a blast with the, with, the, with the infrastructure that we use. So at the base level, and this was not, I, I have to say for your audience, this was not kind of like some sort of tee up, but we're happy Rackspace customers. I we, didn't even know that. Yeah, 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 so it's true, okay. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, I know. So, so this was not a setup. So yeah, so uh, at the base level, we run everything virtualized in Rackspace. Um, we have uh, multiple environments, uh, uh, production, staging, and, and testing. Uh, a, a single environment what might have as many as 20 VMs. There are, uh, some, and the VMs have different roles. So at the base level, we have many React nodes that are doing the base level kind of document store and also search infrastructure. Um, alongside of that, and sometimes sitting on top of it, we have Memcache and we also have Redis. We use Redis as, as a way of actually rapidly uh, aggregating information, like for example, global counts on things. Yeah. Or sometimes we, we, uh, uh, we use Redis also for session information and other ephemeral things like a work queue. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, Node.js as, as basically the, the whole app stack. 
and, and then there's Nginx on top. And on the client side, we're users of jQuery, Backbone, and um, most recently in this new site design, we, we switched over to the uh, uh, Twitter bootstrap for, for a lot of the style stuff. And so that means that top to bottom, we're JavaScript. And uh, even when we run MapReduce jobs on React, we're running it in JavaScript. So there's this, it's a joy to code in this way because there's like no impedance mismatch between code and data on the server and code and data that's on the client. Yeah. So you're, you've been a, a, a player in the search space for a long time, both at Yahoo and at Yeah, of sorts, yeah, yeah. You've been around. Yeah, yeah. you're <laughs> what, staying on mold, that's what you're saying. Yeah. No, you've been around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been inside <laughs> the beasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Uh, very few people have had that kind of, uh, you know, yeah. experience. Yeah. Where do you think, uh, and I have, I have some uh, theories of where search is going with uh, context and with these Google Glasses. Yeah. That search yeah. is almost going to be predictive of what you need and yeah. it's going to, start surfacing things to you right before you need them. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where do you think search is going? Uh, so, do you agree with that? Or? I, I do, I do. And I think that um, um, I, I would go a step further. Um, I, I've been thinking about this for a long time from a lot of different angles, like, like you had mentioned, first from paid search and then in Yahoo and then in, in Bing. And you know, the last project that I worked at, at at Microsoft was Pivot. And that was sort of like a visual tool for exploring different types of web content and also search results. Now. One of the things, and the reason why I got into Clipboard was really kind of shaped by that experience. I think that search is a really important thing, but I think it's one part of a larger workflow that people do. Like, no matter what you're doing, if you're doing hard research because you have a big serious work item to perform, or a personal problem, or you're seeking to be entertained, or you're just wanting to connect with others, there's typically an element of browsing, an element of search, an element of connecting, an element of savings. These are like the, the primitive interactions of the web. And, and what was missing from what I could tell was, was saving. You know, think about it this way. If you're solving, if you're pursuing a goal on the web and the answer can't be expressed as a single URL or a single query, well, how would you bring together two search results into a single place to analyze that? Most people have been pasting into a Word document. And it's remarkable to me that even today, until Clipboard came along, there was no way of bringing together multiple search results, possibly for multiple search engines into one place. So I think the future of search is about a higher level of abstraction. It's about the larger workflow of actually accomplishing a goal. And so there's going to be an element of prediction, as you mentioned. There's going to be an element of almost like personal data mining, but it's also going to be dealing with richer entities than just a title and description and yeah. a link. We've seen that trend I, already. Before the cameras came on, I asked, yeah. are you capturing the location on my mobile phone when I clip something? Yeah, and, and I said, said no. You I said, said no, no, but I, I was like, I was a little shocked by that because yeah. that's context. That's the beginnings of context. You know, where I capture something might really tell you, your it, system it something is. in the future. It is, so I've taken a very contrarian view on a lot of things that are at the intersection between data analytics and privacy. Yeah. And the reason why is, um, and, I, and I don't mean to, to, for this to be kind of like a, a backhanded statement against anyone or anything, this is just our values and about how I want to run this company. Hold, but, hold on uh, a second, what do you need, Rocky? I, uh, so. I can't. I can't understand what you were asking for. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so one thing that we've done that's very different than what typical startups do is we're planning to be at this for a long time. Yeah. All right. And so that means that we're not optimizing for the most rapid growth possible, but we're for the healthiest growth. And um, and so here's some of the decisions that we made. We're going to default everything to private, and you have to choose the public uh, yeah. to publish it, right? Uh, we're not going to require you to have Facebook login. You can if you do if you want. When you do it, we're not going to spam your Facebook network with you know auto follows or anything like that. Yeah. We're not going to automatically connect to timeline unless you click that button to do that. And in the same vein, we treat each clip as private as email because I'll be honest with you, I've clipped medical records on Clipboard. I've also clipped things for like banking statements. You know, I run a startup, I've gotten a wire come in from an investor, I've clipped the, the, the information from the bank website so that I can remember to tell them that I, I, I got the confirmation. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, we stuff. do that all the time, right? Yeah. When I buy my United tickets to Rome, yeah. it's going to say, here's your confirmation number, exactly. and I'm going to clip that and put it on my board so yeah, I remember. That's exactly right. I have, I have, I, and that's how I arrange all my travel. I have all the Expedia, you know, I, I, I book through Expedia, I, I save all the flight, flight details there that has the confirmation number. I have a travel board. I allow my wife to look at it, but that's not anything that someone, anyone else should be able to see. That, right? that actually uh, uh, threw my brain in. Uh, is there any way to use this offline? Because if I'm in Rome, I don't have roaming, yeah, and I yeah. want my uh, confirmation number so I can so, show it to the gate yeah, agent yeah. and say, so, hey, here's my, my, you know, my this uh, is rental an, car. So, so we, we do get a lot of requests for this. At, at the present moment, the answer is no. Okay, so, uh, and when we do go in that direction, we want to do it the right way. One thing I'm a little bit worried about is when you make an export tool around how to you know, pull stuff out, you, you can create a fragmentation problem uh, on its own. And so I want to figure out the right way of going offline without fragmenting your own data. Let, let's see, uh, yeah. we have a demo of what it look, what the, yeah, the yeah, board yeah. looks like. Uh, Rocky, can you pull that up? Yeah. And uh, and tell me what you were seeing. Okay, great. Uh, so we're going to show you just the, the newest talk, feature. So we talk in this Yeah, so we, we, we have a, a new design here that you can see a little bit of. And, and uh, it's cleaner, it's crisper, there's also better ways of doing things. Now what we're doing here is we're gonna clip a recipe, and this shows you how the clipping action works. It just kind of lifts it off the page. We'll hit save, um, and now go back to the clipboard website, refresh the page to, uh, to bring it up. Now here's the clip that we just grabbed. We'll open it up. You can see that it looks you know, pretty much exactly what you remember. All the links will work. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share it to my wife's recipe boards, confirm that, and if I go and take a look at uh, my, my boards over here, I'll see that, that there's a recipes board that my wife is there, and then I can bring up and, and see the clip that I just saved, uh, along with uh, other clips that she, she had grabbed as well. So it's a great place to apply right. Now we're looking at mobile. Uh, the mobile app allows you to, to browse over you know, clips just as you would. You can see a person's profile page. You can see your boards, you can drill into the boards. But what's really special about the mobile app uh, is that if you go into, say, mobile Safari and you copy it with the native copy mechanism, then you could switch back into clipboard, save it as a rich thing, as a, as a rich entity, save it as a bookmark, save it as text. We'll save it as a, as a, as a rich entity here. Um, We'll put in a, a, a quick annotation, make an app mention to, this is uh, Greg typing, uh, make an app mention to me so that I can actually see it in, in my private mentions later on. It gets saved and it, if, if, I, if you go back, you see the clip is there. And uh, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm Robert yeah. Trouble, and we're here. Uh, really at useful. You can see how, how that's useful for a wide yeah, variety of we, things. We, we actually, my, my wife and I actually do re organize recipes this way, travel, shopping. We, we actually, uh, we're in the market for some real estate, did all the research about that purchase in, in one place. It's, yeah. it's, it's powerful. Yeah, I have an autistic school, kid and we're mm -hmm. looking at new school, so we're starting to do that. Yeah. And yeah. It's really a much better way than the email or you know the yeah. other places where we're going to store it all. Yeah. It's really going to be interesting to watch you over the next uh, year, particularly as the Google Glasses come out. I, yeah. I think that's going to change what we want to collect in the world. Yeah. You know? and, and they're going to have some picture collection, but I. I want to, you know, hey, if I see uh, news, yeah. I want to collect that and, yeah. and put yeah. it on my board and, that's, and, and it, read it later maybe, you know, it's it, sort of like an Insta paper. Uh, absolutely. I think, I think about, you know, when you take a look at what's going on in the broader space, um, there's, it's, it's really interesting, you know, Pinterest has actually had tremendous success and we're happy for them. And it, but it's also spawned a lot of sort of verticalized me too's of Pinterest yeah. where it's Pinterest for dogs or Pinterest yeah, for I got sick of travel Pinterest or whatever. Pitch. And, I got and pictures, you know, coming out the wazoo. I got a picture yeah, yeah, yeah. for this. No, no, but, but here's the point. When your goal is self-expression, meaning that your goal is to push things out, yeah. fragmentation is not a problem. It doesn't matter that there's a, a vertical thing for this or that or whatever. If your goal is to selfishly collect for yourself, you don't want that fragment. You want it in one spot. So to your point about Instapaper and Google Glasses, you know, our goal is really, you know, so we've, we've got a new, you know, update on the site. We now have our first mobile app. Our goal is nothing more than to really provide a nexus or a hub for all of that stuff. And so you should look for us to have service connectors, application connectors, other device connectors. We really do want to make this kind of like the one place for you to build your personal web archive. No, that's really, really awesome. Where do I learn more about it? 
go to clipboard.com. Hey, and we, it's in the iTunes store. It's on in the iPhone. iTunes. Yeah, it, and uh, if uh, you know, it takes a little time for Apple to update their index uh, for, but you, you should find it in the iTunes store. You can you can also if you go to the main landing page on the website, there's a big honking button there for download the app as well. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming out and showing it to me My and talking pleasure, about man. it. I, I know you just launched in the last hour, yeah. so yeah, congrats yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah.